Thomas Jefferson was one of the first Americans to call for the removal of blacks from the United States. There was a certain hypocrisy inherent in Jefferson's statement since it was widely known that he was living with a black female slave by the name of Sally Hemings and had fathered seven children with her. In 1733, Samuel Hawkins, a New, a New England theologian, the theologian, proposed sending free blacks back to Africa as Christian missionaries. But it was the British who were the first to establish a resettlement community for blacks. This did not occur until after the American uh, Revolutionary War, when uh, enslaved Africans who had fought on the side of the British were first relocated to first Nova Scotia, and then later in 1787 were part of a group transplanted to Sierra Leone, where the colony was established for free North American slaves. In that same year, 80 free African Americans from Boston petitioned the local government for financial aid in their efforts to go to Africa. The dream of establishing a black homeland in Africa was then picked up by, by Paul Kofi, who was a wealthy black shipbuilder, who had followed the, uh, the progress of the Sierra Leone experiment. He traveled to Sierra Leone in 1811 on one of his own vessels, and um, he was trying to find out the feasibility of taking blacks back to Africa to uh, investigate the possibility of establishing a colony for free blacks there. Kofi was the first black man who tried to establish a black homeland in Africa. He spent much, much, much of his own uh, money and resources. Uh, he was convinced that free blacks and uh, that the federal government should participate in this early back to Africa movement. But the War of 1812 delayed his African resettlement project. Finally, in 1815, uh, Kofi had, had taken uh, 38 blacks to Africa at expense to three to 4,000, which was quite a bit at that time. This trip, however, was poorly organized and ultimately was considered a fiasco. Few arrangements had been made for the passengers once they had landed, landed in Sierra Leone, and the plan received some bad press as a result. Then Paul Kofi, uh, who died in 1816, uh, uh, and the next following year, the American Colonization Society in 1817 uh, uh, was founded. Despite the early failure, Kofi efforts contribute to the spread of this immigration plan among blacks and white Americans, and the next shipment of the colonists were sent to uh, sent from New York on the Elizabeth. After a very bad voyage, they landed at Sherbo, and once again the site proved disastrous for the new colonists. Most of the pioneers died of yellow fever, and those lucky enough to survive relocated to Fort Bay uh, on, the, on the Sierra Leone River. The first enslaved Africans to be emancipated in North America were given their freedom with the purpose of allowing them to immigrate to Liberia, a scheme supported by both slaveholders and missionaries. The American Colonization Society had the main responsibility for organizing and raising funds for this project. Participating in this organization were such notables as the prominent Southern politicians as President James Monroe, Speaker of the House Henry Clay, General Andrew Jackson, Senator and Statesman Daniel Webster, and a Supreme Court Justice of Bushrod Washington, who was the nephew of George Washington. Uh, these and many other uh, persons of note supported legislation for the founding of a place to repatriate free blacks as well as Africans recaptured from the high seas during the suppression of the transatlantic slave trade. Many Southerners supported this concept of immigration to Africa in order to get rid of the free black population, whom they saw as a major threat to slavery in America. By eliminating free blacks, they thought they could guarantee indefinitely the perpetual system of slavery and, and uh, undermine, which was undermining the entire economic system. Many uh, slaveholders kept American missionaries in a supported compromising mood by proposing that these African Americans be used exclusively to Christianize West Africa. To this end, Liberia was founded. 
as a colony of the American Colonization Society. In March of 1819, Congress authorized the President to send beyond the limits of the United States all recapture Africans and to uh, appoint an agent residing on the coast of Africa to receive them. On August 18, 1822, the brig called the Strong arrived at, at Cape Maserato with 35 settlers, along with the Reverend uh, 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 Ashman and his wife. Ashman was later appointed as governor of the colony. Ten of the set settlers were recaptured Africans sent into the custody of the governor and, um, and under the control of the American Colonization Society. Um, the American Navy had captured in total roughly 10,000 Africans of whom 6,000 reached the capital city of Monrovia alive. Many of these recaptured Africans made significant contributions to the founding of Liberia. Once the recaptured Africans were settled in Liberia, land was provided to them along the St. Paul River to build their own communities in the settlement of New Georgia and uh, Caldwell, a little distance from the capital city of Monrovia. The largest group of recaptured Africans uh, was the indigenous uh, the group known as the, the Congo, uh, many coming from Central Africa. Adjustments were difficult for the recaptured Africans, although uh, more and more Africans landed, they eventually learned English, acquired education, and became Christians. They found employment as apprentices and domestic servants uh, for the Liberians who had come directly from America. At first, the American Liberians regarded both the recaptured and local Africans as heathens and savages, which made assimilation into American Liberian society more difficult for non-Americans. This barrier, barrier to unification and integration remained a problem for the last 50 years. Liberia was founded on the American idea born out of the days of slavery. The leaders of the new republic were black Americans who had previously lived in the United States, either as enslaved Africans or free men. Many enslaved Africans were manumitted by, the, by their owners and some by the American Colonization uh, Society. Uh, while others were returning Africans uh, captured on the high seas, the majority of these uh, uh, black Africans returned to Liberia did so during the free Civil War era. Consequently, uh, their viewpoint was that of slaves and not that of free men. Once these black Americans gained power in Liberia, they did not do the, the obvious thing and reject the values and institutions which had enslaved them in America. Rather, they practiced the uh, same paternalistic racism they had experienced in America. For example, at first, the lighter complected blacks and mulattoes discriminated against the darker complected blacks and the darker complected blacks against the indigenous Africans. Later, as time went on, there were fewer uh, differences in skin color. And once the newcomers and the indigenous Africans uh, were black in skin color, then the settlers tenaciously emphasized the difference in culture, which now set them apart from the tribal savages. According to George Brown, the question of color was very important, and black Liberians were divided into four distinct groups. The American Liberians, the common people, the Congos, and the natives. Uh, it was not long after their, their arrival that a tradition became established forbidding social intercourse and marriage between these groups. Following in this tradition, the black Americans also practiced slavery in the early days of the settlement. In order to put an end to this inhumane practice the slave, uh, of slavery, the American Colonization, Colonization Society wrote into Article 5 of the Constitution of 1820, and I'm quote, quoting here, that there shall be no slavery in Liberia. And the same pro provision is found in Article 20 of the Constitution of 1839 and Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution of 1847. Uh, the settlers did not regard themselves as the lost children of Africa. They saw themselves as Americans and not Africans. In the beginning, the bonds of color were stronger than the bonds of culture. 
As time moved on, many of the mulattoes either died out or intermixed with the uh, dark American Li Liberians and local Africans. After about 50 years, there were little or no uh, longer any noticeable differences in skin color. With the disappearance of color as a factor in the lives of American Liberians, the notion of class became important as settlers now tenaciously emphasized the difference in culture which now set them apart from the local Africans. In short, they, they, they recreated a social relationship that they had experienced in America. The latter is one of the reasons why uh, they did not see themselves as Africans and thus carried on with the ideas of, of class and color superiority, uh, which were soon expressed in the form of, cult of cultural imperialism. By 1848, uh, the black Americans had successfully transplanted antebellum culture in Liberia. The major difference being that Liberia and the Old South was now uh, racism had evolved from an economic institution, whereas in Liberia, uh, the origins were, re were reversed. Here it was from a racist ideology that an economic system evolved, giving, justific giving justification for the exploitation of local Africans. In America, most blacks were excluded from the churches, schools, and completely disenfranchised from political and economic participation. Similarly, uh, the natives of Liberia have been to the immigrants of America just what these former slaves had experienced in America to the whites. Only here the roles were reversed from what the immigrants had experienced in America. It seems that if, if T. McCann Stewart observation was not far from the uh, truth when he wrote in 1881 that the oppressed, when given the opportunity, generally becomes the oppressor. George uh, W. Brown's uh, perception of this situation in Liberia is also very precise. According to him, skin color, clothing, language, education, and habits were not to them Liberians. Merely badges of res re respective environments and, and culture, on the contrary, in their Western illiteracy, these were set and fixed as criteria badges of racial superiority or, or weakness. The major difference is that the development between American Liberians and indigenous Africans were in their faulty conception of a warped Western culture which these ex-slaves could not help possessing. The core group of African Americans that immigrated to Liberia left during the pre-Civil War days when the majority of them had not yet been emancipated still lacking the opportunity of learning outright even uh, such culture as existed in the land of their birth. Now, in regard to resistance to uh, African Americans' presence in uh, Liberia, the conflict between local Africans and American Liberians date, date back to the founding of the colony. Greater antagonisms developed as Liberians were forced to struggle for their survival when threatened by local wars with indigenous Africans who opposed oppressive treatment and African-American penetration into their traditional homeland. The very roots of the conflict between the black Americans and the coastal Africans were fixed on the issue of land, land ownership and tenure. For the land ownership was the, the collected idea that belongs to the families and to the whole community at large. The Marigold Liberians uh, believed that they had a manifest destiny to expand the colony in order to bring civilization and culture to the heathens of the, of the uh, hinterland. Once the American Liberians began to expand their political control over their neighbors and in the interior, uh, there were several, se several revolts against their, uh, this penetration. It is important to consider these revolts because of the animosities and hard feelings uh, that were later carried carry over into the American Liberians' relationship with local Africans. For these reasons, the extension of the American Liberian rule in the hinterland took place over a long and protracted, pro protracted period and did not occur without a great deal of resistance from the local Africans. There were several major revolts of note in response to li Liberian penetration. However, the first series of revolts were rather mild compared to some of the later uprisings. Uh, the first revolt 
came during the infancy of the uh, colony and was known as the De Great Grable War in September of 1838. A group of crew at the Bassa, uh, at Grand Bassa had killed the governor of Finley as a result. War had broken out and had persisted for one year and uh, this was known as the uh, Fish, Fish War. Uh, during this entire war, the colonists were never really in a, in a position to defeat the crew and would have collapsed had it not been help from the uh, John Adams Man of Warship, which saved the day. Uh, this interve intervention was the first of a series that would take place throughout Liberian history. In 1856, the Grable revolt against the government over the issue of land tenure, however, was a major revolution which strengthened the very existence of the Republic uh, and did not come uh, to end until 1875, when the Confederation composed of the uh, crew, Grable, Day, and Bassa formed the uh, De Grable uh, reunion, uh, reunited kingdom with the purpose of exterminating the American Liberian ruling class and restoring the ancient kingdom of Abram. After a year of warfare, the revolt was brought to conclusion with the assistance of the United States under the Treaty of, of Commerce and Friendship in 1862. Most of the conflicts between American Liberians and local Africans could have been, could have been avoided. For instance, the Grable War of 1856 could have been negotiated. Land could have been traded for education and trading rights. The crew also wanted to cooperate with the settlers and benefit from these uh, strangers from across the Atlantic. However, in the fear that their position on the coast would be compromised, the settlers refused to extend education to the crew. Uh, this policy successfully ex uh, excluded African Africans, Grables, uh, Crew, Vi, and others from participating in the Liberian society. Uh, the result was the creation of a serving class with skills that were only required by the American Liberians, such as the craftsmen, uh, domestic workers, uh, and in, in a non-residential society, the, the Grable and Crew had little need for technical education. The advancement in these societies was based on professional education and participation in politics. In addition to their anger of being excluded from literacy education, the crew were also unhappy with the ec economic discrimination. For instance, when the Liberian government uh, declared six uh, American Liberian cities as international trading posts, most of the crew uh, declined into small trading posts or of little significance. This successfully uh, caused the crew to become economically subservient to the American Liberians. In 1905, upon the request of the crew, the Liberian president, Arthur Barclay, agreed that the city of Zetra crew would be made an international port of entry. However, however um, American Liberians prevented the, the uh, erection of the uh, necessary custom posts and forcibly refused to allow the custom officials to take up their uh, duties in Zetra crew. In addition, the Liberian government made no efforts to compel the obedience to the uh, presidential order. In 1912, the crew presented the uh, American ambassador uh, with a grievance to persuade the United States to stop supporting American Liberian policy towards local Africans. When the, peti when the petition was ignored by the United States, the crew turned to the British who wanted to uh, bring Liberia un under colonial rule. How however, there is little, little evidence to show that Liberia was justified in the claims of British interference in the crew revolt. Never, nevertheless, if the crew were successful in their revolt, they wanted to turn their problems over to the British because they felt that under British rule, uh, their treatment would be at least better because of their long trading relationship with the British. Uh, the revolt was finally ended when the American Liberians received help from the, the USS Chester boarded by some American black soldiers. Again, it was not, if it was not for outside interference, the crew would have been victorious. Uh, Liberia in 1915 witnessed another major revolt of the crew uh, confederation. This revolt came about because the government refused to recognize crew's rights as citizens and indi individuals, and the crew had, had seized the port, Asino, and uh, several Liberian custom officials were killed. 
By 1917, the major threats from the local Africans were over. The last defeat of the Crew Confederation was decisive. From this period on, the hard feelings and animosity uh, uh, surfaced uh, when Lieutenant Brown of the uh, Liberian Frontier Force immediately had six of the uh, Sastown noblemen executed without cause or reason. The explanation later given for this action was that because an officer had asked for food and supplies and that they were not forthcoming sufficiently quickly enough. In addition, the South Town was burned and pillaged by the Frontier Force. Uh, a total of 41 villagers were, were, uh, villages were burned, uh, killing 69 men, uh, 45 women, and 27 children. Uh, this was just one of the examples of several similar incidents that were found in the report to the League of Nations on forced labor and slavery um, in Liberia. Now I want to take a look at some independence and diplomatic overtures. Efforts of the American Colonization Society to have Liberia formally annexed by the United States as a colony or a protected uh, fell because of the strong southern bloc in the uh, Congress. Being neither a colony nor a protected, uh, Liberia created a problem in international law. Previously, the colony had attempted to levy taxes and collect cus customs and duties from foreign traders on the coast. Uh, since Liberia was neither a sovereign state nor a, a protector, protectorate, uh, as far as the British were concerned, it had no legal rights to function as a state. Thus, the British government refused to recognize Liberian sovereignty because it was just a commercial and political experiment organized and controlled by, by, uh, by a society. Uh, given this problem of sovereignty, the American Colonization Society uh, decided to give uh, the colonists the right of self-government in uh, 1846, after just 25 years of rule. The society passed a resolution stating that the time had arrived when it was expedient uh, for the people of the Commonwealth of Liberia to take into their own hands the whole work of self-government, including the management of all their foreign uh, relations. Uh, they recommended further to issue a declaration of their true character as a sovereign and independent state. In 1848, Liberia became the first new republic in all of West Africa, although Liberia's official dip dip diplomatic history begins in 1848. It was in such a bad financial situation uh, that it could not afford to maintain any diplomatic missions abroad. For the most part, it was represented by white men who acted as honorary uh, ministers and consuls. Later individuals such as Edward Bot Blyton, at his own expense, acted as ambassador at large, in large cities such as London, Paris, and, and other European capitals. The Liberian government was also represented in Washington, Brussels, uh, Madrid, uh, Portugal, Australia, and Italy. I now want to take, take a brief look at the uh, League of Nations crisis. After the American Liberians had uh, completed their domination and control over the hinterland, uh, they gained uh, emergence, again uh, emerged a serious threat to Liberian survival. This was the crisis of 1930, uh, which centered on the labor practice and, and charges of slavery by the League, League, League of Nations, uh, which was sort of supported by the United States under the President Hoover. Uh, in the interior, both chiefs and influential uh, American Liberians had used and abused the local labor since the beginning of the, the, of the Republic. For example, in Liberia, uh, a traditional pawning system as uh, indigenous Africans would work for pay to pay off debts. Also, according to Je Je Gus Lebanon, in Liberia, uh, these have been, uh, there, there have been cases of ponds remaining unredeemed for 40 years or more. More of the labor abuses was tied directly to government policy. Uh, for instance, when Liberia uh, officials traveled throughout the various districts, they demanded unpaid labor to carry their supplies. These abuses were considered minor compared to some of the other uh, charges brought by the, the League of Nations. What really aroused the international community were the midnight raids on local villages by Liberian soldiers, 
seeking labor for coca and sugar plantations on the island of Fernando Po. Uh, this issue became serious once it was discovered that President King and Vice President Alan Yancey were involved in this very lucrative enterprise, which brought $45 a head for each of the 3,000 men ex uh, exported for every 1,500 recruits uh, over the, uh, the, the quota. Uh, this injustice done to the local people first gained international attention and came to the head as a result of, of Thomas Faulkner's visit to the United States. Faulkner made a deliberate attempt to expose the situation in Liberia. In 1928, Faulkner contested the election with President King as the nominee of the, the People's Party. He received 9,000 votes, whereas President King was accredited with 43,000 votes, though there were only 15,000 qualified voters in the Republic. It was not long before the American press picked up the story, and, um, um, and in response to Faulkner's charges, the State Department sent a note of protest in 1929. 20, 20, uh, At this time, Liberia was also attempting to secure a loan from, from the League of Nations as part of the United, United States uh, Liberia Agreement to International Commission of Inquiry, which would con concluded that Liberia was guilty of participating in a system hardly distinguishable from organized slave trade, in the enforcement of which the Liberian Frontier Force and uh, services and influences of certain high government officials uh, are constantly and systematically used. According to the League of Nations, the finding of the forced labor uh, system in Liberia characterized a system that differed a little from slavery. While on the surface it, is, uh, it resembled a system of slavery, technically it was not, as I will explain in a few minutes. This system of labor, forced and labor, forced labor was only found was not only found in Liberia but throughout much of West Africa. For instance, this, this, this phenomenon of labor recruitment was also found in Sierra Leone and uh, Sierra Leone as well as uh, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Ghana. In, in, in these other African colonies, the primary difference were that labor was recruited by the indigenous villagers. Uh, who uh, not only spoke the language but were uh, familiar with the local custom, whereas in Liberia all the recruitment agents were government officials. In other words, Liberia labor recruitment was a government policy rather than a colonial, po a colonial policy enforced by village chiefs. While the system of forced labor resembled indentured servitude, uh, in the labor it was a contractual in its uh, arrangement. It differed and that the workers receive a wage for their labor, not much, but a wage. In reality, slavery, of course, uh, and is a system where labor is free and unpaid. Uh, forced labor in Liberia was, uh, 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 was, was a serious problem. Uh, the, the, the Africans captured the work on the island of Fernando, Fo Fernando Po had no choice in the matter. However, since they did not receive, uh, uh, they received very little pay, uh, since, they, since they did receive very, very little pay, it could not be considered a slavery as Liberian nationals such as Twee, Twee Wynn and Anthony uh, Nimbley have argued. Uh, as part of the government involvement in, in the uh, labor development, the government officials in Liberia agreed to uh, supply the Spanish company on the island of Fernando Po, 1,500 natives each year. In turn, the Spanish government agreed to pay 1,000 pounds sterling each year to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the government. Uh, for the government involvement, the Liberian government also received, received money. Uh, and also the natives uh, himself received an advancement of about three pounds sterling. Uh, the, the village chiefs also received a token fee for each person. As we see, the system was technically not slavery. However, it did represent a form of government oppression. Now, some of the uh, Liberian leaders that participated in this labor, re labor recruitment scheme, of course, was President King, Alan Yancey, Edwin Barclay, John Cooper, Samuel Ross, uh, Philip Simpson, 
um, J.W. Roberts, uh, J.B. Watson, and of course Captain Howard P.C. Uh, Parker. William S. Tubman was a central figure in and was a labor recruitment agent for the Liberian government. Tubman became very wealthy from his participation in this business of labor recruitment. Uh, whether this is true or not is, uh, some s scholars said this is merely, uh, merely uh, conjecture. However, what is known is that Tubman was active in labor recruitment from the beginning uh, to, to the termination of the system. As a result of the commission's finding and because of President King's acceptance of the League recommendation and suggestions of the International Commission of Inquiry into slavery and forced labor in Liberia, and his agreement to propose to postpone some re to postpose propose some forms, he was forced to resign. Secretary of State Barclay became the next president, and under his leadership, the government refused to accept the commission proposal. However, the economic situation got better as the Firestone rubber plantation got off the ground. Consequently, there was no longer a need for a long uh, for the Liberian government that was seeking from the League of Nations. And in 1935, uh, the President Roosevelt decided to let the controversy die out uh, when diplomatic relations uh, were resumed. Uh, in response to the uh, uh, League of Nations, President Barclay attempted to bring a, a better deal to the hinterland by introducing a public health service and other programs of benefit to the local people. However, his reforms uh, efforts were undermined by certain Whig leaders who were determined that these uh, American Liberians and local Africans uh, who gave testimony to the League Commission were to be disciplined. Tubman, who, was what, who, who became the next president, acted as the legal advisor for most of the Liberian officials involved in the labor controversy. Now I want to take a look at the uh, a new era of, in domestic relations. Before winning the national election of uh, 1943, uh, William uh, Tubman had gained fame as the legal defender of the Liberian officials involved in the League of Nations. Investigations into forced labor and slavery in Liberia. He was well respected by both the American Liberian League and as defender of the faith, uh, and also by the local people because many times in the past he had taken on cases without compensation. Tubman election marks the beginning of a change of relationship between local peoples and the descendants of settlers. As a politician, he came up through the ranks with credentials in good order. He was shrewd and attempted to bridge the gap between local and American Liberians by initiating new reform programs designed to bring about social integration and at the same time forestall any revolutionary change that might eventually destroy the order of things. Tubman Open Door Policy was the first of his programs to better the condition of people living in the hinterland. The new policy was a direct attempt to uh, reverse the previous policy of the American Liberians in isolating the people of the interior from economic and political benefits and from participating participation in the economy. Uh, the American Liberian leadership wanted to isolate the interior from the modern change as a policy of control similar to South Africa's policy towards uh, their African population during the apartheid uh, era. President Tubman was successful in, in convincing the ruling elite that by opening up the interior for foreign development, they would not undermine their control of the republic. Through modern technology, they would be able to develop more modern and efficient means of control than had ever before. The main point of Tubman's argument was that through industrialization and, and urbanization, social change could be controlled and change would be evolutionary instead of revolutionary. President Tubman's unification program, like his open door policy, was twofold. Um, in purpose, uh, first it was, the first aim was at bettering domestic relations between the coast and the interior. Secondly, it was designed to serve as a beachhead to resist the new forces of change that might cause Liberia some serious problems. 
Several leading members of the True Whig Party regarded Tubman's cultural integration plan as threatening and radical because many of them had previously tried to preserve their status and could no longer be maintained by isolating the indigenous Africans from the rest of the country. However, his new policy was not designed to alter the, tra the, tra the traditional relationship between American Liberians and local African. Rather, his aim was to turn back the winds of change that were fanning African nationalism and were speaking as, and, and were spreading through Nigeria, the Gold Coast, later to become Ghana, and most of the other colonies still under European rule. Thus, the purpose of President's unification program was to prevent the emergence of a nationalist movement against the American Liberian way of life. President Tubman realized that the vast majority of people in the interior had to be assimilated into a Liberian standard as their own. This attempt at mass integration and assimilation was called National Unification, a political program designed to preserve the high standard of living of the upper classes while eliminating any possible revolutionary changes from among the masses. It is an inauguration, it is an inauguration in 1914, excuse me, 1944. Uh, President Tubman explained his program of national unification this way. We shall engage and strive at assimilation and unification of our various population composing the body politic. Uh, Liberia must be a place for all Liberians to live in alike, all to stand equally privileged, responsible and protected by like administrations of law. All classes of our people must be made to fuse and coalesce into a solid whole. In a speech in 1955, he again detailed his reason for his unification policy. President Tubman realized that when the horizons are severely restricted, unrest, discrimination, and even insurrection and rebellions are often the end product. Finally, the, the rise of nationalism throughout West Africa and, and after World War II, the True Whig Party saw the fundamental ne 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 necessity of bettering the domestic situation at home because repercussions were, beginning, uh, were being felt in Liberia's relation with many of the emerging nationalistic governments. Uh, as a direct response, uh, uh, substantial uh, legislation was passed with the aim of diminishing the, the distinction between coastal communities and the interior. In addition, President Tubman extended voting rights to all property holders who paid their HUD, HUD tax. Next, he established uh, an elected uh, representation in the House of Representatives for the provinces, which were uh, in 1964 turned into counties and given full representation in the Liberian Senate. Despite the many negative sides of President Tubman's open door and unification policies, they did bring a new era of change in the standard of living of the indigenous Africans. Foreign investors helped to build uh, all weather roads leading from the coast into the interior in order to transport their products to the ports which they had built. As a result of the open door policy, many concessionary companies built more effective road systems in the interior and also there were some spin-off developments uh, also occurred. These included the construction of bridges and highways which uh, did much to bring the people of the hinterland into contact with the coastal community. The roads were also necessary for the teachers and medical doctors uh, to reach the vast uh, interior of Liberia where the majority of the people live. Okay, and at this point um, I have some questions uh, or some suggestions um, for the um, uh, TRC and then I'm, I'm going to conclude with some other suggestions. Um, when I was invited to come here and I was looking at some, some things and one of the uh, uh, things I was concerned about is is to take a look at some of the things that, that have taken place here. And I, I think what the TRC is doing is, uh, is, is wonderful. But I also think that the 
TRC should redefine uh, maybe its role to, to educate the public and that the main objectives, of course, are not to punish citizens that come before it, but to gather information that would help with the healing and reconciliation process. Uh, victims and uh, uh, perpetrate, perpetrators uh, need to uh, tell their stories. These stories should be made available to the, the librarian's uh, population via electronic delivery system, reports, uh, books, uh, uh, at no cost. Secondly, I think the TRC hearing uh, um, is transparent, and I think that's very good. Um, thirdly, um, I also think that past economic and, and political, um, past economic and um, political crimes against indigenous people by the True Whig Party um, should also be heard by the TRC and, and many of these issues involving particularly uh, issues of, of land ownership. Um, fourthly, I think the Liberian Supreme Court, the court system, government officials, including the office of the president, uh, should not use their position to protect groups who have violated human rights or, or the rights of Liberian citizens. Fifthly, I think that the TRC might want to recommend to the government uh, the removal of honors of in individuals who have abused government offices uh, at the expense of this poor population. For instance, uh, the naming of symbolic places and institutions. Uh, as part of a healing process, I think the naming of, in particular, the James A. A. Pierre Institute of Law should be questioned due to the role that the former Supreme Court uh, judge played in, in abusing the laws of Liberia and many of the uh, land uh, dispute uh, cases. Also, I think the government, sh um, sh as part of this reconciliation process, uh, should give a public apology for past crimes against the people and that the government should pay reparations in the form of building schools, roads, uh, medical centers in rural and poor areas. And lastly, I think that the TRC should recommend past government officials with the most heinous economic and political crimes against the Liberian people uh, are persecu persecuted at a special tribunal set up to address wrongs against humanity. And also, I think that the, uh, the history books here uh, need to be revised uh, to uh, re reflect the great uh, diversity of, of all the various uh, diverse groups in Liberia. And, um, and also, as part of that process, uh, I, I think it's important um, when you have books for your, your secondary, primary and secondary education, um, that you also, you, you incorporate um, uh, what has gone in, in, the, in the Civil War, uh, the great destruction uh, that it has caused, because I, I think having a historical memory and, and, and writing something in such a way that's inclusive of all the citizens will go a long ways in um, um, helping to create um, a sense of, 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 of national uh, unity. Okay, in conclusion, uh, speaking on the question of unity, I think there is a need for national identity and unity because you really cannot achieve unity without a national identity. And uh, I think all Liberians need uh, something that will bring them together and that can hold them together in terms of this uh, national identity. And in 1948, President Tubman talked about national unity, but what he really meant in his uh, unification uh, plan was to keep African nationalism from developing among the indigenous Africans because it might prevent problems for the, for the ruling group. National identity and unity, I think the purpose has to be to create one nation uh, out of many. And that a national identity has to include all Liberians, many diverse ethnic and cultural groups, uh, and that this is important to, for self-respect, uh, confidence, 
unity and, and a sense of, of nationhood. And, and from, from this national sense of unity, it will contribute to the development of the uh, new Liberian state. Uh, some unresolved issues. I, uh, and I'm just going to say a few things about this, and because, because I know Dr. Dunn is going to point to uh, tomorrow enlighten us and give us uh, more uh, information on the, uh, the historical symbols. The Declaration of Independence states that we, the people of Liberia, who are originally inhabitants of the United States of North America, this statement excludes the indigenous people who constitute more than 95% of the Liberian population. Uh, also, I, I think there needs to be more of effective communication throughout the country. I think communication, or the lack of it, contributes to conflict. Um, of course, roads need to be built, education centers established in rural areas, because education is also one of the keys to uh, helping to contribute with this national identity. I think Liberia needs to also hold these meetings uh, that you're holding to record uh, the events of the Civil War uh, and, and reproduce them in an accessible way for the, for the public and, and to archive it properly. On the language issue, I think uh, English should be the official language because uh, it unifies all the various ethnic groups into a standard language of communication. But I think there should be at least one indigenous African language should be selected as a secondary language uh, to be used. And also, another issue I think is the, uh, the national seal of, of the Republic, which states that the love of liberty brought us here. What about those Africans who were already here? Uh, this statement needs to be revised to be more inclusive uh, to all librarians, maybe something like love, liberty, and justice for all. Um, also, uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say today. Uh, let me see guys. No, I do have some other statements I want to make. Oh. I have, I have a little brief note on uh, the whole idea of truth and reconciliation uh, committees. Uh, I, I think, as a final note, that the, the purpose and mandate of this commission is to promote national unity, peace, security, truth, and reconciliation after a long civil war. In the history of civil conflicts, there has been a number of Truth and Reconciliation Commission besides Liberia. Some of them include uh, Argentina, Canada, Chile, uh, El Salvador, Fuji, Ghana, Guatemala, Morocco, Panama, uh, Peru, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, and South Africa, as well as uh, uh, South Korea and, and East Timor. Uh, these countries had experienced genocide, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanity. The mandate of most, most Truth and Reconciliation Committee have been to discover and to reveal past wrongdoings by the government. Uh, in the case of Liberia, one can argue um, that the issue of class, culture, ethnicity, and land are at the roots of the historical crisis. Uh, more importantly, the people and victims of internal unrest, civil war, state terrorism, uh, have left the pub public in a, in a state of confusion because the new governments that have uh, been established and have these Truth and Reconciliation Committees uh, are primarily based upon the South African model, uh, which has been controversial because many of the individuals accused for crimes against humanity are now part of those governments and go un unpunished and with, with, with uh, impunity. Given the reality and, and looking at the past Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I, I think it's time for Liberia to begin uh, the healing process and, and to move towards the future and to make sure that Liberians would never war against Liberians again. Reconciliation is good and necessary. But justice is always better. 
And what I mean by justice is that the idea of political, economic, and social justice should also be considered on the road to reconciliation, and that people who have been violated must be guaranteed their safety from state terrorism. Um, they must be protected. They must have food security. Um, and also, uh, individuals who have committed crimes against humanity should also receive justice. And I'll end with that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, <coughs> Dr. Holloway, for your presentation. a very broad and extensive overview of the evolution of the Liberian state as well as taking into consideration the interaction and relationship between the settlers and the indigenous population. And one thing you noted is that semblance of that relationship and these bad effects have affected the modern state of Liberia and many of those did exist today. <clears throat> Apart from that, you also solve the history of Liberia on how this thing came about, how colonies were established, and then examine some of the policies of past administration leading up to the Fernando crisis and the intervention of the League of Nations, and then of course the conflict in recent times we've experienced. And then you went forward to advance recommendations that the TRC could consider as far as uh, reconciliation, unity, and the issues of identity crisis in our country. And you went on to identify class, culture, land, ethnicity as being at the bottom of our problems. And lastly, you emphasize justice has very been has been very very important in reconciliation. I want to thank you very much for this presentation and with your indulgence we will entertain an hour's break and then we'll return for questions from the commissions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Hearing Officer we will join for one hour.